Hello and uh, welcome once again to our Bible study here at the Good Shepherd Lutheran Church, Appleton, Wisconsin. Glad you're joining me uh, today as we continue our Lent journey uh, to the cross and to the empty tomb on Easter. Uh, we have our study today is Mark chapter 10. Uh, I think, a, you know, maybe a rather surprising request uh, or, I don't know, quite a, a demand from the disciples, uh, James and John, to be seated uh, at positions of authority uh, in when Jesus comes into his kingdom. We'll see how Jesus handles that and what he reminds us of when it comes to be uh, his people, his disciples today. So let's begin today uh, with our prayer. Lord Jesus, we recall the hardship you endured in order to eventually end all hardship once and for all. As we live in this time of suffering, remind us that you know our pain. Lead our hearts to repentance, that we may acknowledge our sin and turn from it. Comfort us with peace, that we may follow our Savior where he leads, even through death and into eternal life. Amen. Okay, so Mark chapter 10, our introduction. Uh, Jesus led his disciples and others who followed him onto the road that pilgrims took from Jericho, low in the Jordan Depression, up to Jerusalem in the mountains, rising to the hills some 3,380 feet over the course of 17 miles. His disciples and others were surprised. Uh, Jesus intended to observe the Passover there and were fearful that what might happen uh, in the center of Sanhedrin's power. Jesus took his disciples aside and told them clearly uh, what lay ahead of him. So proceeds our text as the Son of Man will be handed over into the hands of sinful men, suffer, die, and then rise again. It was what they feared, but not what they expected. Mark attached the approach of James and John to Jesus with their request to Jesus' solemn words, uh, which, again, is, is kind of, um, I think we viewed it before as a selfish move, as a confusing move, as, you know, this is what you're uh, concerned about, kind of like, uh, you know, when we have a loved one who's uh, about to die, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is, uh, who's going to get your inheritance? Who's going to get your inheritance? I see that jewelry over there. Can I have it in, in the midst of that solemn time? I uh, formed a study in contrast. Their Lord was ready to become the Lamb of God. He had come to be while the two disciples looking for places of prominence, places of prominence. And so we continue. And they were on the road going up to Jerusalem, as our introduction said. And Jesus was talking, uh, was walking, sorry, ahead of them. And they were amazed. And those who followed were afraid. Uh, the fear of, you know, that area and situation with uh, a hostile environment. And taking the 12, again, he began to tell them what was to happen to him, saying, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests, the scribes. They will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles. They will mock him and spit on him and flog him and kill him. After three days, he will rise. You know, maybe even uh, thinking you know, the knowing that there was opposition to Jesus, that maybe they weren't expecting that it would go to this level. Ultimately, uh, rest, crucifixion, um, hatred, you know, it was there, but, you know, maybe they wouldn't carry it out to that degree. But Jesus uh, shares it plainly. And so this is what kind of is surprising. Um, and James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you and he said to them what do you want me to do for you so you know you have jesus at full attention uh, quite the request jesus entertains it the question um but it's interesting how they uh, use this opportunity grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory jesus said to them you do not know what you are asking are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized. Um, now, a couple of interesting parts there, too, is that they understood that Jesus' kingdom was going to come, a kingdom of glory. So they saw this and believed in this heavenly kingdom, not an earthly kingdom. And it was going to be realized, so why not ask, I guess, in that regard, too. Uh, what is meant by the cup that I drink and the baptism with which I'm to be baptized? Uh, drinking the cup. Uh, we have Old Testament uh, background to signify suffering uh, that someone had to endure. Uh, this was, again, a solemn occasion as Jesus just 
shared what will take place. And so this confirms that, right? The baptism he would endure would be all that God's justice would be poured out, poured out on him uh, because he, our sins, sins of all people were also laid on him, poured out on him. Um, so what does their confident we are able to tell us about James and John? You know, that they maybe they have some understanding about what's taking place and the seriousness of it. They're just padding their, you know, their eternity. They're, um, why not ask for the best place when you get there, the place of honor when you're going to get there. Um, but also, you know, having to see what happens to Jesus, we know their response to it. Uh, they fled. Uh, they were locked in a room. Um, so in the midst of this sort of sorting things out and dealing with reality, um, do they fully understand also? Uh, but we will see that they had to be prepared as you and I also are as well. And they said to him, we are able. And Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink, you will drink. The baptism that at which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, for it is for those for whom it has been prepared. So you, you took your shot and uh, can't answer that question. Why did Jesus add that they would not necessarily qualify them for what they wanted, um, their experience? Um, James was the first apostle to die a martyr's death, so he did drink the cup. John lived to an old age. Uh, but did experience uh, the persecution as uh, and exile uh, as leader of the church in Ephesus and its surroundings. So um, they were not immune to, nor are we, uh, to the rejection that um, Jesus faced and we face and its consequence, uh, namely suffering and potentially death. Uh, they did drink the cup and experience the baptism, but many others of God's servants experienced the same. So they were not unique in this regard, nor are we. Um, take up your cross and follow me is what Jesus said. So expect it, be prepared for it, and know that I'm with you throughout it all. And when the 10 heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John. Um, uh, maybe understandable. And Jesus called them to him and said to them, you know, that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles loaded over them and the great ones exercise authority over them, but it shall not be among you. Whoever would be great among you must be your servant. And whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. So what is their frustration here? Some have speculated that their frustration is that they saw the power grab themselves and, and wanted that also. They were indignant that, um, you know, they kind of beat him to the punch. Uh, what does the disciples' indignation reveal about them? To cover up for their own sense of ambition and for their competitive spirit uh, that still existed in the followers of Jesus. I mean, they um, heard this uh, uh, request and kind of jealous, you know, and could be divisive for the disciples. And so Jesus removes that divisiveness, doesn't he? He reviews that passion for power in saying Jesus again taught them about the paradoxical kingdom. Whoever wants to be great in his kingdom must be a servant. Jesus came to uh, not to be served, but to serve, uh, to give his life as a ransom for many. The Greek di Dionychus, or Dikonus, sorry, Dikonus, meaning the one who serves willingly, okay, or slave there, servant. Uh, Diokonoi, uh, we look at too, a servant. Whoever wants to be first must be slave of all. The Greek is doulos, slave, uh, one who has no choice in the matter because it is his master's will that determines his service. So what is Jesus telling us here? Um, for me, it's a reminder that Jesus secures the kingdom first and foremost. Uh, through his death and resurrection, he opens the kingdom of heaven to all believers by his forgiveness. And as we live as his forgiven, redeemed children, we are to serve. We are to serve, um, just as Jesus served us. And serving others means that we share the gospel at whatever cost that it may be. And entrusting our future into God's hands, into heaven, 
and uh, wherever seat we have in heaven will always be the best seat of all because we are in the presence of Jesus, our Savior and Lord. And I know that's what it is to be a follower of God. It's to be a servant and not to be caught up in grandiose ideas of power and might because uh, Jesus alone has all power and authority. It kind of reminds me too of our epistle reading we had last week, how, um, you know, God did not choose the wise or the strong. He chose the weak and, um, you know, the despised of the world. And uh, that's the way that we should approach our lives in humility and in service. So that's what we do. Um, it's a matter of getting there and helping others to get to heaven also. So a good text today, I mean, I think a very simple one, we're a uh, wrapper up right now. Uh, so maybe meditate upon that when you uh, are thinking about, you know, uh, my place in the kingdom is that your place in the kingdom is as a servant, as a slave, um, following the example of Jesus who suffered, died, and rose for you. So thanks again for joining me today as we've had our Bible study, uh, as we continue our journey to the cross and the empty tomb, Lent and Easter. Um, if you have any questions, always, uh, you know, uh, send me an, an email, a message, uh, call the church here at Good Shepherd. I will be more than happy to talk to you more about God's word. So until our next Bible study, thanks for joining me and God bless your day.